Southern governors declare that the presidency can't be torn to the north in 2023, while Northern leaders forum say they will not accept second position. And the former Deputy Senate President Ike Ekwaremadu proposes the involvement of the Southeast lawmakers as a solution to ensure the release of the detained IPOP leader, Namdi Kani. So this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. The issue of zoning for the 2023 presidency is in the news again. This time, several stakeholders have made several decl declarations. The chairman of the Southern Governors Forum, Rutimi Akiridolu, has said that the Southern Governors would not support any political party that fielded a Northerner as a presidential candidate come 2023. In a surprising statement, the Northern Elders Forum said the North was in the process of rebuilding itself and was not prepared to play second fiddle in a nation where it clearly enjoys numerical strength. And a former presidential spokesperson, Donio Kukwe, uh, has warned the leadership of the People's Democratic Party against presenting a Northern candidate for the 2023 presidential election to avoid another major defeat. He said major politicians were defecting from the party because of the issue of a northern presidential candidate. Well, joining us to discuss this and break it down is legal practitioner Obinna Chuku, Mr. Shehu Gabam. He is national secretary of the um, SDP and Opunabo Inkotara is a political affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, Great. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Gabam. Um, if you watched um, the video um, from Mr. Hakim Baba or you, you saw the statement, you'd obviously um, understand where my question is coming from because he started by um, saying that the North is in the process of building itself and that uh, it wasn't prepared to play second fiddle um, where it enjoys numerical strength. So I'm going to start by asking what you think he meant by that because we obviously know uh, the numerical strength of the north but the issue of playing second fiddle what do you think he meant by that mr gabon can you hear me i'm hearing you and let me thank you once again and thanks the, the viewers as well first uh, let me say this uh, when i appeared on the same uh, channel before, I made it very clear that uh, it is dangerous, uh, the, the kind of language the chairman of the Southern Governors is used. I've said it very clearly. It's not going to go well for anybody or any zone. Uh, you know, it's, it's very provocative. I've listened to him very clearly where he said must, must. So this is not a language of a politician who believe in negotiation, who believe in the very viable discussion to take care of uh, the strategic interests of all the zones. And uh, they not have not been under any coercion or intimidation or cajole when we supported the presidency in 1999 uh, from the Southwest. Uh, and it cannot take any act of intimidation or harassment or cajolement from anybody. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the chairman of the Southern Governors Forum, who is an elderly person, ought to have uh, look at the language is using properly in the overall interest of the country. But his language is not quite good for the country, it's not quite good for building a consensus and understanding, especially nowadays that uh, we want to have a very cohesive, united, and a country that understands itself more. You know, the timing was very bad, and of course, the response of Hakim Baba Ahmed is quite understandable, it's quite clear because it's an attempt to intimidate a, a region that is known by diplomatic and its ability to, uh, you know, swallow the bitter pill, you know, in the interest of peace and unity. So I think his, his statement is quite understandable and uh, nobody is going against it. Uh, unless we begin to talk to ourselves I think we have a connection issue there but i'm going to throw i'm going to toss it to um open up let's examine what um 
Mr. Sheikh Hugabam is saying about Hakim Baba Ahmed's um, position. Uh, he seems to say he seems to think that um, um, Hakim Baba is responding um, to, in his words, um, the speech or the messaging that has been coming from the southern governors and, and, and certain people from the south. Um, so I'm going to ask because uh, um, Hakim Baba Ahmed talked about the fact that. Um, I, that the people in the north would not succumb to threats and um, they, they were not up for the highest bidder. Um, I would like to get your response to that. Yes, thank you, Maria. Yeah. Um, I, am, I, am, I am a little bit um, taken aback by the espousal of um, the last speaker uh, because I think uh, he got his pass wrong. Uh, first and foremost, he said um, the North in 1999 was not coerced into uh, giving the presidency to the South, that South was precisely Lusako or Basinger. There was a subtle coercion, occasion by expediency. We had a situation where um, the man whose university had claimed to be the winner of the election was murdered in detention, and so to assuage the feelings of the Westerners, Olo Basindo was brought out and given the ticket, and eventually emerged as the president. Let us not embellish the facts and say the way they are. Unfortunately, but I'm not hearing. It was, it was a way, it was a way of assuaging, uh, a, a placating a, a region, and at the same time, staving off potential crisis. That is one. And number two, he said the uh, statement of the uh, Northern Elders Forum, I can't remember the name of who made that, the, the person who made that statement, was in uh, response to the uh, Southern, the South East Governor's uh, claim or assertion or postulation, whatever it is. But that in itself is absolutely wrong. Two wrongs don't make it right. If Mr. A made a statement that you find offensive, I don't think it is proper for you to also make a statement that will fester the division, that will fester the tenuous legations I'm, I'm of the engagement to call No, let me finish. Let me finish. No, please. Let me just finish, Marianne, please. Because the truth about it is that and if you also listen to the statement made by the NEF rep, it is incendiary because he made and emphasized the issue of numerical strength. And we all know in this country that the issue of numerical strength is true. It is not true. Even if we take the issue of Kano State, for example, it is not true. What they are located as up is uh, not I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But when you say it's not true, you're yeah. telling me that the... National Population Commission's figures are not true, or they're not factual. Say you're I, saying I, I that not, you're, I, I you're implying, not, Mr. Kunabo, you're imp not, implying uh, that, that 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 the, that the Northerners, the numbers that the numerical strength strength that the Northerners are laying claim to is false, and that means that the NPC is complicit in lying to every other Nigerian in this country. Is that what you're implying? Marianne, I'm not implying. I just stated any categorical care. I said I'm not a provoker. It's not a case of second circumlocution. I'm not. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I am not a provoker. It is mandatory, spurious. Spurious. How can, okay, let, let us take a Kano. Before Kano was split, how many local governments? After Kano was split, how many local governments? Who are you fooling? The only thing is still in favor of a particular section. Okay. And now you're telling me that based on the numerical strength. We look, we have a country, this is a country that is causing into a travesty called Nigeria. We have a country where we have a lot of injustices going on. And even like in America, you have a college system. Why do you have a college system? It's a take care of the other states. It's a take care of, the, because if you go by numerical strength, a lot of states in America cannot produce the presidency. That is why you have the college system. Why do you have the federal character, ter uh, the federal character in Nigeria? Is to address all these issues. Now you have a president from the north that has been in office. 
it is it is an unwritten agreement, an unwritten code that look, let us So in if the it's unwritten, why why do we expect oneness, anybody in the to, why if it's Sorry? not written, if it's not legal, if it's, there's no document that says that this is what we must follow within the political parties across the country for power sharing. Why should anybody follow it? But just hold your thought, hold that thought, hold that thought. Let me go back to Shehu because he was cut off, but I will come back to you. Just give me a second, I will come back to you, I promise. Um, is, is Shehu back so we can get him to respond? Mr. Gabam, are you there? Before before we you got I, cut off, we you were I, trying to make a point. Go I, ahead, and you've heard what Mr. Tari has said. Quickly, let's take your thoughts I, so we can go to um, Barista Chuku. Okay, are you hearing me? I can hear you. Okay, let me say this. I've not heard what the barista have said at all because the network is very poor. But I heard him saying that there's something like soft tool uh, intimidation in 1999. I think there's a lot of ignorance of what happens. And I don't think he was in the system by then. I was part of the formation of PDP from the G7 to G18, G90, G34, when Alex Okwame and others were brought in to balance and make a very viable political structure. Number two, I was aware of what happened that led to the zoning and also, also people who went against. And I would also want to say this live. If you are inviting me on such program, Please don't invite me and leave me with people that have no decorum. I'm I, here. Well, I'm so sorry, I, Mr. Gabba. Apologies. You cannot um, demean anybody who's on this show. You can speak to them decently with respect. Do not say that they do not have decorum. I guess that that's how he sounds, but that doesn't mean that he's being disrespectful in, in any way. So please, let's respect each other. Yeah, yeah. I need to be yeah, respected, yeah. and uh, otherwise I can go yeah, yeah. where he was going. So let me say this. It is, I'm not the one who generated the statistics, first and foremost. And these statistics are verifiable. I have been to every state in Nigeria. I have been to every state in Nigeria. I've been to majority of local government in Nigeria for campaigning. So nobody can tell me what this state is or what that state is. I have been to, I know virtually all the top politicians in Nigeria, in every state of the federation. So I'm not speaking from an empty background. And I have told you from the beginning, people should not provoke the system because we, we don't have career politicians that are mounting positions, very sensitive positions. Majority of the governors came in by accident. They were not trained to be there. To, you know, they don't understand the sensitivity. So are you implying that even the, of their so, own state, so, so who are the people that are... Because, people I want to, I, I want to take you up on something. Mr. Akin Baba Ahmed said and something about... That, look, being the, the hold on, hold on, Mr. Gabba. I'm going to let you get to the point. Just hold on. We're having a conversation. Hold on. When you say that um, these most of these governors were not trained to get to that position, they got there by accident. I want to draw your attention to something that Mr. Akim Baba Ahmed said about the fact that um, you know the North is able to lead, or they were designed to lead. That's what his statement implied. But I'd like to quickly just go to it exactly the way he said. Um, he implied that leadership has fallen on them somewhat and they seem to be the ones that should lead, knowing that they have more numerical strength. So is it true that maybe the people in the North have been trained to lead from the get-go and so they have better information and knowledge as to lead this country? Is that what you're implying? Who was implying that? You said most of the governors who have come into power were not trained. They got there by accident. Is there a training school of sorts for these people to become governors? I mean, politicians are there because they feel the need to run, or maybe the people want them to run, whatever reasons. I mean, but when that you is, say that, that they, uh, they, were, they happened on those positions, can you please explain to us what you mean? That is what happened to the country, and that is what I have explained. It is a country that in 1999, you know, when the quintessential politicians came together, forfeited their individual differences, and formed a political party, you know, that accommodated all set of opinions across the length and breadth of Nigeria, you know, it was beautifully accepted, and so on and so forth. So for that reason, we have shortfall of credible politicians to contest for position. 
because the thinking of the political class then is that there's likelihood for you to have a military intervention. So they stay aside, and then people who were part of the military regime and made some money within the military regime, who like credibility and decency, found themselves within a political power. They use the money they have and buy most of the positions, and they were there. Compared to people that have been, for instance, from, from your own state, there are people that are defined, that are known, there are politicians, you can talk about them. They were short-changed. And that's what led us into where we are today. It has nothing to do with either region or so. It has to do with the background of an individual. Somebody maybe like a lawyer. He was trying to be a lawyer. He doesn't want to. Oh, I think that we lost that connection again, Mr. Gabba. But um, let's go back. Let me go to Barista Chuku now because I think that um, uh, we'll get back to open up to respond to Shehu. Uh, Barista Chuku, let's, let's look at those who are agitating in the country because we see all of these agitations, especially in the southeast and now the southwest. The southwest is asking for a Yoruba nation. Uh, the southeast has been agitating for so long. And then, of course, the system has thrown up these non-state actors uh, who are right now in custody. And with this sensitivity, you know, all around the country, with the tensions that we're experiencing, is this the best time for such sensitive statements to be made? And I'm not just referring to that of the uh, Northern Elders Forum, but of course, what um, uh, the governor, the leader, the governor that leads the Southern Governors Forum, what he said. <clears throat> okay, thank you for having me. Uh, first, I will say that uh, the statements credited to the Northern Govern uh, Southern Governors Forum and uh, that of the the uh, the one from the North or the statement that uh, the one you mentioned. I want to say that. Uh, Number one, this is not the time to make that kind of statement. We have only gone into the second year, so second year plus some fractions of a uh, few months for a four year time. And uh, what, what do we have? Politicians, the so called elite, congregating to determine how or who. Uh, uh, runs or who leads Nigeria in 2023. Looking at all the statements, both from the South, that of the South, and that of the North, I can tell you that the statements are from the usual, the usual people, the people that have been benefiting from Nigeria since 1999. None of them there has ever, has ever or will come to say that he has not benefited. Who are the people suffering? The poor masses. At the end of the day, the so-called uh, so Southern Governors Forum will make their statement. That of the North will make statement. At the end of the day, they will uh, again shortchange the masses. Look at all of them. Check them from the beginning to the end. All of them have been benefiting from 1999. Some of them were commissioners in 1999. Today, they are governors. Tomorrow, I can tell you, by 2023, almost all of them will be contesting for presidency. At the end of the day, who suffers? The poor masses. But, they have but, but, not but, even but, sat down to I'm look sorry at to speak over the you, Mr. Nigeria Chico. that they are struggling to govern. Look at the level of agitation from the southwest, from the southeast, from south-south from Northwest or from all corners of this nation. Everybody, everybody is disenchanted. People are agitating and protesting. So, I ask, so, 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 so that's why I want to ask this question. Is it, is, it, is it really all the fault? Mr. Chuku, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hold on, on hold on. Let me ask you a question. Just hold on, if you can hear me. Hold on. Is it the fault of politicians, and I'm not in any way absolving them of anything, but is it really the fault of politicians that the average Nigerian who you are saying that is disenchanted or feels disenfranchised or not carried along, is it the fault of the politicians that this is happening? 
Is it the politician who has said that you should not? Is it the politician who said you should not be part of partisan politics to determine what happens within the political parties before they field the candidates? Is it the politician? Is it the politician who holds you at gunpoint to say don't join a political party or be part of partisan politics that could help you make decisions, even at whatever level? Is that the politician's fault? Mary, let me tell you how this works. How this works. From let's say let's look at uh, People's Democratic Party. Now they are agitating that power that they have zoned their office to a certain a certain geopolitical zone. By that they have somebody in mind while doing doing this zoning. They, from that zoning they have completely shut out the other group. The same thing if you go to the All Progressive Congress. All Progressive Congress will also, because of one or few persons, zone their political or the political uh, uh, space or the presidency to that very geopolitical zone. By that, they would have shut out the other zones or the other people. Then again, they now force people to now say, you're a lawyer party man you must vote for that person. That's the person that we have nominated or the person that is our consensus candidates. From there, the person goes into election. Whether the vote of the people counts or the vote of the people uh, 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 does not count, that is immaterial. At the end of the day, a president will emerge. When that president will emerge, immediately the these uh, polit geopolitical zones will start preparing for the next election. Nobody sits down to say, what have you done? You promise this, that, and that, this political party. Come and show us your scorecard. How many of the promises that you made that you have been able to fulfill? Nothing like that. I heard from one politician from Anambra State the other day. He said whether the people comes out to vote, or not, what he knows is that a governor will emerge from Anambra State. That's how the Nigerian politician thinks. At the end of the day, the masses are forced. Of course, they have so uh, disparaged, they have so dealt with the masses of this nation that the masses can no longer, has nothing to do. You come out on the street to protest over bad governance. You are slaughtered, you are killed. The soldiers are uh, the military security agencies are deployed at the end of the day who suffers who bears the brunt the poor masses all the people that are shouting that are making statements inflaming this the system here and there telling us uh, uh, how the north is has the largest population how the south is uh, is now the uh, uh, where the uh, presidency should be zoned zone to all I can tell you are for personal interests. Okay. None of them can show me all the governors. Let the governors show us the poverty index in their states. Let us see whether they've been able to lift even a hundred percent from their state from poverty. But I ask my question this again. How many of us, those people regime. that you refer to as the masses, I hate that word by the way, uh, those people who are in those states. They seem tight-lipped. They're not doing anything. What have they done to bring those governors? Because we're quick to point to federal government um, that government has not done this. The Buhari administration is this and that. Yes, we understand that the, the Buhari administration has its own problems. The government Mary that Anne. is directly Mary affecting Anne. our lives, yeah, what have we as a people done to bring those people happened. to accountability? Were you in Nigeria when Ensa's protests happened? Part of the demand for Ensa's protests was for good governance. What happened? Within 48 hours, those masses, the youths, were, were immediately removed from the street. Who listens to them? There's a complete disconnect between the so-called politician, the government, and the people of this nation. All that politicians care about is zoning. Like okay. they have all come out. I can tell you, henceforth, they will take over the media. They will, they will grant all kinds of interviews, tell you how they possess the wherewithal, all the monies 
the funds that they are using is it from their pocket is from our money the money that came from a common post that's okay. what they are using they have so they have so mesmerized the poor masses of the masses of this nation this nation to the point that not the masses are no longer interested okay. they can continue to govern the masses have even handed them over to god it's only god that will judge judge all of them what they are okay. doing to this nation okay. the government will come for a time of four years no achievement at the end of we the day to... look at two years we have into we, have we can still do projects but two years into we are talking about the okay. north is uh, so telling you i need to, I need to move on i need to move on the to... south is saying it must be them I need to move on I to Inkotaria. I, I need to move on to Inkotaria. I think we lost him at some point and um Shehu Gaban, but let me go back to Inkotaria. Uh, Mr. Tara, are you there? Can you hear me? You cut me short. Yeah, you didn't lose me. You cut me short. You didn't lose me. Apologies. Um let me come back to you. Um there is a statement I was trying to quote to Mr. Gabam earlier on, and I'm going to do that to you now. Mr. Akim Baba <laughs> mentioned in his statement uh, that I quote we inherited leadership and being honest is not being stupid, he said. Um, and he also says uh, that, um, that the North is ready to build its economy. Now, I want to ask, there are regions in this country that feel that they have never had a shot at leadership in this country. And I'm not necessarily talking about the South, uh, because the South has had some, you know, opportunities to run but there are certain regions in this country that feel that they've been shortchanged so my question is where does this statement leave those people because there are so many people who have hopes for 2023 does this mean because again mr akim baba has said that they will not play second fiddle and i'm trying to understand what that means is it that they will not deputize i, I wish i was sitting with him in the room to have uh, to ask this question Mm. But the question is, what happens to those people who've never had a shot at leadership? Does that mean that those people will not be carried along? Does that leave them out totally from the country? And does this mean that we might also be seeing agitations from those people who feel left out, aside from the guys we're already seeing agitations from? First and foremost, I have one man who believes, like I was saying before I was cut short, even in America, you have the college system. We all know what the college system is all about. Because without the college system, then the minorities in America will be disadvantaged. That's why you have the college system. Now, in Nigeria, we talked about the zoning. Like I said, I think it's an unwritten. You see, when legal imperatives are antithetical to democratic ethos and legitimacy, then we must allow the democratic ethos and legitimacy to outdistance the legal imperatives. And that's actually where the issue of equity comes in. Now, we talk of a situation in Nigeria. He talked of numerical strength. That's why I said it is not allowed. And that's why I made reference to 1999. Then they had the numerical strength, they claimed, in 1999. Yet it was given to about the, to assuage the South West because of what happened. If you talk of justice, equity, and fair play, the truth is, if you ask me, I will say the presidency should be zoned to the southeast. Because the southeast right now feels marginalized. Some people will say, let it be plant on meritocracy. Talking of meritocracy, every region, every region has qualified candidates. But we talk of even the federal character in order to ensure inclusiveness, oneness, and to make everybody believe that you are part of the system. Because if we talk of numerical strength, then that, that is what is leading to, that is what is causing the problem we're having today, that people are talking of uh, uh, separatist groups. So if you ask me, I will tell you the truth about it. It should be shown to the Southeast. After the Southeast, then we can now say, okay, let us talk of the best. Now, meritocracy takes precedence. But if right now you say, no, let the best, or you plant it on numerical strength, why will bread turn to stone in my own mouth? That is what the Southeastern has to last. Okay. Why is it that when it was the turn of every other person, you talked of zoning, 
Now that it is my turn, you are talking of no, let the best. Happen. Then they feel that they have been marginalized. Okay. And look what has set out is much more bewildering than outright rejection. And that is the problem in the Southeast. Okay. So if you right. ask me genuinely, we should go to the Southeast. And All after right. which, right. we cannot sit back and talk of zoning. Well, before we wrap up, uh, I just wanted to see, uh, is Mr. Gabon back? Let me just quickly ask this last question, because with the Southern Governors uh, taking a stand and now the... He's not here. Okay, I'm going to throw this question back to Mr. Chuku. With Okay, he's here. Mr. Gabon, with the Southern Elders, uh, with the Southern Governors Forum taking a position and with the Northern Elders Forum taking this position, where does this leave political parties? I'm asking you because you're a party man. Um, there's obviously the PDP, who's, opening, who's open to zoning. Um, there's also the APC, who um, has two different ways of you know, um, throwing up a candidate. Half the time, they have consensus candidates. But where does this leave all the political parties? Plus, a former presidential aide, Donyo Kupe, has said that if the PDP does zone this to the north, uh, they are going to lose. Uh, and let's not forget, uh, for the past two um, election cycles, the PDP's ticket has been to the north continuously, and they have not been able to get that position. But does changing the zoning give them any leeway? And let's also talk about the APC, including your party, the SDP. Um, what does the future hold in closing? Well, uh, the situation will sort out itself uh, by 2023. Some of these rhetorics will not be the solution to the problem. It's going to be a very practical thing. Uh, Chief Doyle Okupe is my very good friend. Uh, we've been comparing notes. And I think I agree with uh, a lot of analysis done by Dr. Obinna. You can see that he's flowing from the brain. He's just talking from the mouth without connecting with Mr. the Mr. Gabon, please do not insult the sensibilities of other guests. Please make what, your point what, decently. What, what, Thank you very much. I will said. say this one last time. Please do not insult the sensibilities of your co-guests. Co right. That will tell me the kind of character you bring on program. Please, we do not want to have a back and forth. If you can quickly answer the question so we can wrap this up. Thank you. So most of what Dr. Obinna have said was right. This crisis has been generated by politicians, almost 60 to 65 percent. And of course, the voters take the other problem because they are the ones who queue to vote for either a competent or incompetent person. Above all, you know, at the end of the day, after all this heat, those who created the heat will sit down and dialogue it out. I know that we belong to different political parties, so the party have to zone itself. It have to decide where they will zone the presidency to. It is not even the governors who belong to different political parties that will determine where, where, where the position will be zoned to. It is the political parties that will say, okay, we are either zoning or we are not zoning or we'll allow a competent person okay. to come on board and contest. So uh, generally, I'm not worried much about the heat. It's going to fizzle out once election is, uh, the campaign issues are on. This thing well, will be sorted out. Politicians know how to sort themselves out at the appropriate time. All right. Well, we have to go. Thank you very much. Shewu Musa Gabam is of the SDP. Barista Obina Chuku is a legal uh, practitioner. And uh, we also had Opunabo Inko Taria. He is a former governor, a, uh, the former aide of uh, the governor of River State and is also a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. <laughs> We'll take a short break now, and when we return, we discuss former um, the solution of the former Deputy Senate President Ike Ekwedemadu to the detention of IPOB leader Namdi Kanu. We'll be back after this break. <laughs>